Greetings, Acolytes, and thanks for tuning back into the channel. As of this video's posting, we have started to get gameplay footage of the Jedi Fallen Order sequel Jedi Survivor. A lot of us are really excited to follow back with Cal on his journey and to see how his story ultimately plays out. Apparently, with the release of this game, we are also going to be getting a Jedi Fallen Order novel that is going to fill in the gap between the first and second game, as Jedi Survivor apparently is going to take place five years after Fallen Order, putting the events with Cal congruent to the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. This is all very exciting with the game releasing in March, but we wanted to discuss something that a lot of fans have pointed out in a brand new theory. At the very end of the first trailer for Jedi Survivor, we see Cal Kestis examining a silver-haired male suspended in an abandoned Bacta tank. There have been many exciting theories circulating about who this individual is, and many of us are of the opinion that they are bringing in a Legends character, while one of the more likely explanations is that it could be a brand new character to canon. However, we here at Stupendous Wave have caught wind of an excellent theory that we'd like to highlight the probability of. This theory being that the person hibernating in the Bactopod is none other than the clone of the Jedi Master, Joris Sabayoth. For those of you who don't know, the clone of Jorah Sabaoth played a crucial role in the original Thrawn trilogy of novels. He was a Jedi Master who served during the days of the Clone Wars that ended up getting captured and ultimately killed by Sidious, who then used his DNA to make a perfect Force-sensitive clone, which was an extremely difficult process. The clone, however, thought that he was the real Jedi Master and was put in charge of protecting Palpatine's secret vault on a remote world. The clone of Sabaoth, which we'll just go ahead and be calling Sabaoth for the rest of this video, Video, ended up going insane and ultimately fell to the dark side. He was quite powerful in his use of force lightning, telepathy, and battle meditation, and he was even strong enough to keep up with the likes of Luke Skywalker, who was in a state that made him feel lethargic and sleepy. However, he was still able to contend with Luke. Sabayoth's power in the force, especially his skills with battle meditation, were what made him a real legitimate threat to Luke and the newfound Republic. Grand Admiral Thrawn had made a deal with the crazed Dark Jedi Master to use his battle meditation for the Imperial fleet against the New Republic in an exchange, and in return, Thrawn was to deliver Sabaoth the Skywalker children so that he could create his own Jedi Order. So anyway, why does this matter, and what does this have to do with the current canon and Jedi Survivor? Well, for one thing, we already know that the release of the Ahsoka show will actually bring back Thrawn, as he will be making a grand appearance as the new big villain for Star Wars canon moving forward. One of the biggest staples of Thrawn's story is the Heir to the Empire trilogy, with his use of Jorah Sabaoth, of course. While canon could possibly decide to brush this under the rug, we already know that they are pulling much from Star Wars Legends, and not forget that in Star Wars Rebels, Thrawn even had his Nogri assassin at his side, just like he did in the Legends novels. I think this all might be coming together to bring us a film adaptation of the Big Thrawn event, and it all starts with us getting some backstory on none other than Jorah Sabaoth, which begins right here in Jedi Survivor. As Star Wars Theory pointed out, the title of Jedi Survivor could mean a lot of things, not just Cal Kestis. Whoever is in the pod, we're assuming here that it is Sabaoth, could be the Jedi Survivor that the title is mentioning. With that said though, this of course is just a theory that we're reaching and using all of the loose information that we have and other sources to try to put together. But now, let's take a look at the probability of this happening. What if the gameplay story goes something like this? Cal finds Jorah Sabaoth in a Bacta tank after exploring some old Imperial ruins. Once freed, Joris will present himself as an ally and maybe even train Cal and get him to proper knighthood in the game, while all along they dodge the Empire left and right. During this, we start seeing Sabaoth slowly reveal his inner darkness and madness until it cultivates at the very end with him being the secondary antagonist to the entire game. Let's take it even a step further and even suggest that for a short period of time, Cal Kestis accidentally follows him to the dark side and has to have a battle within himself to shake free of the grasp of the dark side. In my opinion, this sounds like a very exciting story that would perfectly lead us into the future of what Lucasfilm has planned, creating a larger Star Wars universe that is interconnected from the games to the Ahsoka show and far, far more. If, of course, Grand Admiral Thrawn is going to be the big bad of a film one day and all of these major players are just being established now, from Joris Sabaoth to Thrawn making his return, it would make sense that they are indeed following the Thrawn trilogy of events. As in Star Wars Legends, following the death of Darth Sidious and Vader, Thrawn was the main antagonist and Joris Sabaoth, an incredibly powerful dark Jedi, which would be a variation on just more Sith, 
was also an exceptionally powerful being that rivaled all who came into contact with him, so much so that Darth Sidious even deemed him worthy of being cloned. Of course with this though, I expect Lucasfilm to take their royalties. I don't expect Luke Skywalker to be a major player in all of this, which would of course be a deviation from the Thrawn novels. However, it would also be something much different for Star Wars moving forward. But my friends, what do you think of this? Is this a story that you would actually like to play through in the Star Wars universe? And what do you think the likelihood is that this is Joris Sabayoth who is being brought into canon in this way. Let us know your thoughts down below, as we'd love to continue the conversation with you. As a quick reminder, due to the holidays, there is a big sale on the Star Wars merch page, where you can get Mandalorian hoodies, Stormtrooper hoodies, Revan hoodies, and far far more half off. Also, for a limited amount of time, if you use code WAVE at checkout, you'll get an additional 15% off your entire order, no matter what you get. But anyway, my friends, again, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Hit that subscribe button and may the force be with you.